Hello, my name is Frank Mazzella. I'm the Learning Products Manager for Vision Research. I'm here to present a series of PCC Phantom Camera Control Software Tutorials intended to show you many of the various features and processes incorporated in PCC. At the end of this Cine Analysis Part 2 Coordinate Measurements Tutorial, you will be able to specify the units of measure, calibrate a measurement scale, apply edge detection algorithms to the images of a Cine, set an origin point, and perform coordinate measurements. Using the PCC 2D Analysis Tool essentially turns your Phantom Camera into an extremely effective test instrument. However, you don't need a camera connected to the PCC software to perform measurements on your Cine files. So let's get started. Before I can perform any coordinate measurements, I need to specify the units of measure. The units our measurements are going to report as. By clicking the Application Preferences button in the Manager tab and open the Measurement tab. I can set the individual measurement units by selecting it from its respective pull-down selection list or I can select one of the preset buttons to set the measurement units. By default, the SI or International Standards units are selected. This button sets the distance units to meters, the speed unit to meters per second, the acceleration unit to meters per second per second, the angle unit to radians, and the angular speed to radians per second, as you can see. When the US units preset button is selected, the distance units will be set to feet, the speed unit to feet per second, the acceleration unit to feet per second per second, the angle unit to radians, and the angular speed to radians per second. For this tutorial, I'm going to set the distance unit to inches, the speed unit to inches per second, the acceleration unit to feet per second per second, the angle unit to degrees and the angular speed unit to degrees per second. We will cover the remaining options later in these Cine Analysis tutorials. With my units defined, I'll click the OK button. Just as I did in the Reviewing Your First Cine tutorial, I'm going to open the Cine I want to perform measurements on. For this tutorial, I'm going to use the ToyJets 2 file. In order to perform coordinate or distance and speed measurements, I need to specify a calibration scale that can be applied to the active play panel cine file or multiple cine files. If I want to apply the calibration scale, which I'll do in a moment, to multiple cine files, I'll need to enable the unique scale per application option in the Preferences Measurements tab. Let me show you how this works. First, I'm going to go back to the Unique Scale Per Application option in the Preferences Measurements tab and enable or check it and click the OK button. Now I'm going to open a couple of previously recorded Cine files. Notice that all three files presently have a scale of one inch per pixel. Remember, I would only use this feature if all three Cines had the same scale, unlike what I have here but I need to demonstrate how this feature works. Now I'm going to calibrate a scale for the ToyJets file by clicking the Calibrate button. Notice just under the Set All button, which is disabled because we enabled the Unique Scale Per Application option, the software instructs me to click the first end of the scale or enter a scale value. If I know the scale value, I could type it into the Scale Data Entry field. Since I don't, I'm going to move the cursor to one end of a known scale and select it. The software now instructs me to click the second end of the gauge, essentially the other end of the known scale. Since I know that each of the black and white rectangles on the box is one inch each, I'm going to count 12 rectangles and place the cursor at the end of that rectangle and select it. The software now asks me to set a gauge value, or the size of the scale. In this case, the gauge will be 12 inches, so I'll type in the Set Gauge dialog window 12 and click the OK button. The software informs me 
that the calibration is complete and displays a scale value, in this case 0 0.020 inches per pixel. Notice when I select the ball file, its scale has also changed to 0 0.020 inches per pixel. And the same for the helicopter file. This scale was applied to all the files by the software because we had the unique scale per application feature enabled. Before I move on, I'm going to close the ball and helicopter play panels, then disable this option since the scale is going to be different as we perform measurements on several different subjects, each with its own scale. Let's move on to performing measurements using the options under the measurement selector. First I need to locate the first image in the CINE measurements are going to be performed on. For this portion of the tutorial, I'm going to use the first image of the toy jet CINE. To make it easier to locate the edges of our subject of interest, I can apply an edge detection algorithm to the CINE by clicking on the Image Tools toolbar button. Then click on the Filter Pull-Down Selection list arrow and try the various edge detection algorithms to find out which of them works best. As you might have noticed, the Edge High Pass 5x5 algorithm seemed to work best for this city, so I'm going to select it from the list. To enhance the edges even more, I'm going to remove the color saturation and close the Image Tools window. Since I just calibrated a scale for this city, I can skip the Calibrate Scale process. However, before I forget, I want to show you what the Set to All button does. The Set to All button can be used to apply the calibration scale I just defined to any CINE file presently being displayed in a play panel. To demonstrate this, I'll open a couple other CINE files. Notice the scale for the ToyJet 2 file is 0 0.020 inches per pixel. I also want you to notice that the Nerf Pellet file is set to a scale of 1 inch per pixel the same for the chips file. If I go back to the ToyJets 2 file and click the Set to All button, notice that the Nerf Pellet file has changed its scale to 0 0.020 inches per pixel, and so has the chip file. This is because the Set to All button has applied the scale of the ToyJets 2 file to the files that were opened in play panels. Let me just close the Nerf Pellet and Chips files before I continue. Now, let's move on to performing coordinate measurements. To do this, I'll need to change the origin point. By default, the origin point is the very first pixel of the image, the pixel located in the upper left-hand corner. Notice as I attempt to move the cursor to that first pixel, the XY coordinates of the pixel in the center of the crosshair cursor are displayed in the status bar. So let's say I want to perform coordinate measurements on the first jet, and I want to know the coordinates in inches the jet has moved from its starting point. To do this, I'll need to set a new origin point by clicking the Set Origin button in the axis area, then move the cursor to that point on the image and click it, in this case the tip of the first jet. To help locate that point, I'm going to use the zoom function and zoom in 10 times. I'm also going to turn off the smooth zoom algorithm and use the pan cursor to locate the tip of the jet. Now I need to enable the coordinates and inches options so the coordinates will be measured from the new origin point. If the units were something other than inches, feet, meters, etc., this field would read coordinates in that unit value. If I don't enable this option, the software will report the coordinates of the pixel as it relates to the entire image, the default origin, in the upper left-hand corner. 
Now that I can easily locate the tip of the jet, I can click the Set Origin button. But to select the point, I'm going to need to change the cursor back to the crosshair. Then click the tip of the jet. To verify that the new origin point was set, I'll need to enable or check the Show option. Notice the crosshair now displays on the image. The point where the lines intersect is the origin, the point at which the coordinates will be calculated from. So if I move the cursor to the origin, where the lines intersect, notice that the software calculates the XY coordinates and reports them in the status bar as X0, Y0. Now, let's advance the city a few frames and relocate the tip of the jet. This time I'll use the preview panel sliders to locate the tip of the first jet. Then move the cursor so that the center of it is on the tip of the first jet. The software calculates the XY coordinates and reports them in the status bar just like before. I could have certainly measured coordinates for multiple points on the image if I so desired, but it was unnecessary just to show you how to perform coordinate measurements. So that's how easy it is to do coordinate measurements with the PCC software. Before we move on, I'm going to reset the image size to fit the playback panel by clicking on the Zoom Fit Toolbar button. Reset the image tools back to their default settings. Reset the origin by clicking the default origin button. And disable or uncheck both the show and coordinates in inches options. So that concludes this portion of the Cine Analysis Tutorials, where you learned how to define the unit of measure, perform timing measurements, create a calibration scale, apply the scale individually or to multiple Cine files, set an origin, apply edge detection algorithms to the Cine images, and perform coordinate measurements.